Hi, my name is Katherine Hawker and I'm a science illustration teaching artist. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you a way to combine the curiosity of science and the art of drawing. This video is part of the Kennedy Center's online collection, Teaching Artists Present, where teaching artists from all over the country lead arts activities that you can do from the comfort of your home. For as long as I can remember, I've been a science nerd, especially biology. I love learning about plants and trees and animals. I've also always loved to draw and paint, and I like to practice my skills so that I can become a better artist and illustrator. Drawing things that I'm curious about lets me learn science and practice art at the same time. For example, I've been drawing this deer skull here. And as I draw it, I see all these beautiful, strange, and mysterious parts of the skull and learn about it. And at the same time, I'm getting better at drawing skulls. When I draw like this, as a scientist and an artist at the same time, I use the drawing cycle. It's an easy, fun method to draw things as true to life as possible while discovering the secrets and mysteries about them. If you're like me, a curious scientist who loves art, you can use the drawing cycle too. In this video, we'll find something to draw, I'll demonstrate the drawing cycle, and you can try it on your own. To do the drawing cycle, you'll need a pencil and eraser, a piece of paper, or a sketchbook, and of course something that draws your curiosity. You could find something in your house. Uh, I collect things from outside sometimes and bring them in that are interesting curiosities. You could also draw a house plant. Or even you might find something in your kitchen that draws your interest. And of course you can look outside to find things to draw. Here at my house in Alaska, I am surrounded by plants and I think that's what I'm gonna draw today. I've got wild plants, I've got garden plants. Let's take a closer look. One thing that's drawing my attention out here is that cottonwood tree. But as you can see, it would be really complicated to draw. When you're learning to use the drawing cycle, it sometimes helps to choose smaller things. So I'm going to look for a leaf from that tree. By drawing a leaf, I'll learn more about the tree. I could draw outside, but it's feeling like it might be starting to rain soon, so I'm going to go into the studio. We'll see you there. By the way, not everywhere is as wild as my yard, but those of you who live in cities know that you can find things to draw anywhere. All right, I have my pencil, my paper, my leaf. I am ready to start the drawing cycle. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my pencil down. The first step of the drawing cycle is to observe. The more that I look at this leaf, the better I'll know it. The better I know it, the more true to life my drawing is going to be. So I'm going to start by just spending some time observing. Now that I know the leaf better through observing it, I need to plan my drawing. So that's step two of the drawing cycle is plan. <clears throat> I'm going to plan where I'm going to draw it on the page. I'm going to draw it over here. I'm going to plan about how big it's going to go on the page. And I think I'm going to make it about life size. If it were something really tiny, I might make it bigger. And I'm also going to plan how I'm going to do the drawing. I'm going to plan what part I'm going to start with first and what part second. I think I'm going to start with that stem and then I'm going to follow up by drawing the outside shape of the leaf. The next step in the drawing cycle is practice, but I'm not going to practice with my pencil. I'm going to practice by tracing the lines and the shapes in the air. And what that does, it's really powerful. It teaches my hand to draw what my eye sees. It teaches me to feel those lines and shapes for when I draw them. Observe the leaf. I planned my drawing. I practiced the lines and shapes in the air. Now it's time for step four of the drawing cycle to draw. Remember, my plan is to start with that center stem and then add the shape of the edge. So here I go. I'm 
I remember noticing as I was practicing that that stem has a turn in it. It's not perfectly straight. Never hurts to practice again so I can make sure that I feel that shape as I'm drawing it. Okay, practice this side again. It's a little wavy. A little bit wavy. And then back around. I'm gonna look at it, make any little changes I need to. I think I'm gonna make this come out a little bit more. And this side come out a little bit more. And maybe a little further up. You can always make changes in drawings as you're working on them. I'm always looking back and forth for things that I want to change. So I've done the four steps of the drawing cycle. I observed, I planned, I practiced, and I drew. And here's my drawing. But take a look at the leaf and at my drawing. I'll bet you can find at least three things on here that I haven't added to my drawing. For example, all these side veins that are coming up here. I also see a little hole in the leaf right there. I also see some spots on the stem, and I notice that the edges are pretty bumpy. They're not smooth like I drew them. That's where I can go back and do the drawing cycle again. So I'll start with those veins coming off the sides. I'm gonna observe them really carefully. I'm gonna plan where to put them on my drawing. Looks like there'll be one there, one there, one there, one there, and then on the other side, one there, one there, one there, but one about there, one here, and one there. I'm gonna practice the shapes, and then I'm gonna draw them. So I'll do that next. And the next thing I could do is look at the edges, those bumpy edges. Same thing through the drawing cycle. Here you can see me use the drawing cycle to add the little holes and to make the stem thicker. And then I make some changes to finish the drawing. So you can see the steps aren't one, two, three, four, done. They are one, two, three, four, one. It's a cycle. The more times I go around, the truer the drawing is and the more I learn. As I was drawing the leaf, I noticed several things that sparked my curiosity. Why are the stem and veins a different color than the rest of the leaf? What made those little holes? Why does the leaf edge have little bumps? I wrote those questions down right on the drawing as I thought about them. Maybe I can find the answers by doing more observations, drawings, or research. I did that leaf drawing on regular paper, but I do most of my science drawings in sketch journals. That helps me keep track of what I've observed and learned, and if I want to share something I drew, I know right where to find it. A sketch journal can be any kind of sketchbook or notebook. You can even make your own. Now it's your turn to try the drawing cycle. Here's a reminder of the steps. Now go follow your curiosity. And don't forget to share what you observed and what you learned with others. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you'll explore other videos in the Kennedy Center Teaching Artists Present collection. Thanks for watching.